Welcome, everybody. We're going to go and get started right now. Everybody grab a seat. So welcome to the 62nd annual North Idaho Sports Hall of Fame banquet. Record crowd by more than 100 people tonight. We have 905 people in the room. It's the largest event that the resort holds in the year. So we're going to have, uh, I'm Rick Rasmussen. I'm the president of the North Idaho Sports Hall of Fame. Um, we're going to start our program at 7, but we're going to start right now with the invocation from one of our board members, Roger Stewart. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Let's bow our heads, please. Heavenly Father, as we gather here this evening, we seek your presence and guidance. Bless these young athletes with strength, courage, and sportsmanship. May they compete with honor. Ability. Grant them the ability to push past limits, uphold teamwork, and display grace and victory and defeat. Let your light shine through them, inspiring others to see in you all they do. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Roger. They're going to come out with the food now, and then we'll start the program at 7 o'clock. Thanks, everybody.
Welcome, everybody. If you guys want to grab your seat, we're going to get started here. I know you're still eating, and but we try to stay on time and be cognizant of giving everybody back to their hometown safely and on time tonight. So, Again, my name is Rick Rasmussen. Um, for the last seven years, I've been the president of the North Idaho Sports Hall of Fame. And um, we're going to first... Um, we want to do a little shout out in the back of the room here. So the the folks, uh, Ryan Skaggs and Brandon Bainey from idosports.com are here tonight. We're being streamed on the internet, both on Facebook and on the web. So for the first time we've been picked up. So folks that can't make it here tonight and grandparents and other stuff can be walking. Can we get a big round of applause from the folks from idosports.com? We got an incredible group of inductees. The speeches last night were amazing. They all had different stories of how they got there. There's a list of all of our inductees, um, and it's pretty amazing. And last night, these stories that we heard were just, they were, it was pretty, um, very emotional and pretty eye, you know, eye-opening, how different and backgrounds and how they came, but then they became the top of their whatever refereeing or running a football team or coaching or athletics or going to the Olympics, you know, their stories were so very, very moving. Then we have a guest speaker. He was, he was so funny last It was phenomenal. We are very excited to have him be our guest speaker tonight to come up here and donate his time. And it was pretty awesome. But first of all, record crowd, more than a hundred. When we first started this seven years ago with our board, we were at the Coeur d'Alene Inn. We were doing it with about maybe four, four fifty, and we'd be there until like midnight, one thirty. And so they they said they want you to be in charge. So Joe Dobson got me, into, and I said if I'm going to do it, I'm, a, I'm I delegate. I work in a hospital. I delegate a lot. Some of my employees are out there, a little Macy and other folks, and they know that I delegate better than almost anybody. And so we go through, and it we're going to be out of here before nine thirty. I guarantee it. So. Um, but we can't have this thing without sponsors. And there are some great sponsors, but our title sponsor um, is P1FCU. They're a Pacific Northwest original, born in 1938. It's a credit union that puts roots down to its members to succeed. For over 86 years, P1FCU has stayed true to the ideas of working hard, giving back to the community, neighbors and friends, through the Pacific Northwest. Joining us tonight is Chris Lothus, and he is the president and CEO at P1FCU. Chris has been with P1FCU for over 35 years, active in the Lewiston area community, many, many boards helping his community. It's our pleasure to get a few words from our title sponsor, P1FCU. Here's Chris, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh Bees of public speaking, Gordon and Steve Largent. Be brief, brother, be brief. So that's how it goes. But uh, thank you for the introduction. Took uh, some of the first parts away from me. But uh, yes, we've been in business since 1938, uh, serving 10 million people in Washington, Oregon, Idaho. We're proud to do that. I've had the honor of being the head coach of our credit union team for 35 years. Uh, down here is some of my team members and happy to have them here. Uh, tonight is a celebration of the achievements of many athletes, teams, and coaches representing the best of Northern Idaho. And everyone here tonight is already a winner just being nominated. Uh, this year's Hall of Fame inductees are so well-deserving for their many achievements on the track, on the field, on the court, in the classroom, in their chosen careers as health professionals, coaches, educators, and business leaders. It is re rewarding for all of us to have the opportunity tonight to honor them. Uh, these students here tonight, are excellent. They're all great athletes. They all have achieved things that most of us can't, and we're just proud to have them here. It's proud to support them with what they do in their lives, and everything we get to do as adults, parents, friends, coaches is just an honor for us. It's our honor to honor them. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. We have a future winner right here who's going to present you with a plaque. She's a fifth grade basketball star down on the Sorensen Panthers team. And so she'll be out here in a few years, but there's a plaque. Thank you very much. 
We also have a couple, you know, so they're a title sponsor. We have a couple other major sponsors, Sam Craft Construction, uh, Northwest Specialty Hospital. Uh, we have a ring sponsor. Each of the inductees will be getting their Hall of Fame ring from Steve and Paige Leifer. Um, without that, you really can't, you know, be doing all these events. You know, we try to sponsor all these uh, kids that come in here. On uh, page 14, I believe, is a list of the table sponsors. So all of our board members went out. And I think we have 83, 84 tables that were sponsored here so that the kids in our communities could come to this event and not have to pay. So big, big hand, a round of applause for all of our sponsors of the tables. This event does not get done, though, without our board. I'm on a lot of boards. Um, and I've been the chairman of a few boards. I'm on some other boards. And, you know, I'm on those boards. And just realistically, some of those boards, people do it for their resume. They want to go there and they want it to be on their resume. So they're on different. This group does not. This group, when they elected me, the president said, I'm behind you. I'm going to help out. They do it because of the kids. They do it for all of you guys in the room. And they do an incredible job in we meet and we uh, find table sponsors and they have contacts at all the schools. They work with the ADs, they send out many emails. So can we have all the board members please stand up? I want you to give a big round of applause. We've got a great group of boards from Lewiston all the way. Tim Sperber, Roger Stewart, Steve Hudson, Katie Ball, Cami I Kid, Ken Homer, Gary Everson, John Knowles, Tim Ross, Darren Mom, Bert Salberg, Joe Dobson, Kyle Mai, Chuck Christopher, Larry Schwanke, John Fries, Pudge Almquist, Steve Leifer, Kyle Mai. Where's Mary at? I want to special. oh, there we go down there. And our newest member, I want to wait for him because I think half of Bonner's Ferry here tonight. So Travis Hemthorne, yeah, so we weren't going to forget you, Travis, yeah, so. But there's a couple that really make this thing happen. And, She's going to kill me, but we went to high school together 40 years ago, Coeur d'Alene High School. Once a Viking, always a bike. And uh, Mary Gomer Dobson, where's she at here? In the hallway. Great. Well, she, she handles all the ticket sales. She is really the one that drives this. So big round of applause for Mary. When you see her, let's buy her a drink. Bert Salberg. He does all the scripting, he's writing, telling, you know, and he does all the work, he does all the bios, he does everything, you know. I delegate, and you know, but without Bert and Mary and all of our board members, John does a ton of work, and Chuck does our website, and Roger does the program, and Gary does the awards, and, you know, everybody helps with ticket sales and stuff. So it's just, it's pretty awesome. It's a great board. They do it for the kids. You know, we're not paid, but it's pretty, pretty amazing stuff here. So tonight we'd like to recognize somebody. So we're lucky enough to have the Idaho State High School Athletic Association current president. He's retiring in this year. Can we have Ty Jones please come on up? Ty's been the president of the Idaho High School Athletic Association in the last 10 years. Done a phenomenal job. He's, uh, as some people put it, the state of Ada. He realized that there's more teams in the state than just in the state of Ada. So it's nice that he realized that there's teams in North Idaho also. So, But he's done a great job. So but we have a little plaque here for you. We want to thank you. They sponsored a table tonight. He comes up and supports this event. So a big round of applause for Ty Jones. Okay, we're going to get this thing going and you won't have to listen to me anymore. This would be great. Um, so it's my privilege and honor to introduce our MC. He has taken this to a new level. Many of you have watched him for many years on television, radio. He's currently the sports director at SWX. He's a decorated career that's comprised of 40 years of covering local, national sports all through the Inland Northwest. He's the former voice of the Idaho Vandal football team and he's covered many, many events nationally. He's covered a Super Bowl, NCAA tournament, Final Four, Memorial Cups, NBA Finals, Stanley Playoffs. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very pleased. Dennis Patchen, thank you very much. I'm gonna pass it over to him. Is anybody having a good time here yet? 
All right. Okay. Just checking. I want to thank Bert. Bert is the guy. Bert's my writer. Okay. But I rewrote his stuff yesterday, so it actually makes sense. Uh, thank you, Bert. Uh, Bert. Uh, Bert is a former newspaper journalist. They can be rather long-winded. I'm a TV guy who gets two and a half minutes at night. Bert gave me 65 pages of script. Okay, of course, it is a big font because I have to get my glasses. When I first started this, I didn't have to use my glasses, but I can't print 177 pages with four words on every page. So apologize. You're going to see me with glasses tonight. All right, before we get started, I want all of the athletes, the high school athletes, who are who, who, because the because the college athletes forget you. No, no, the, you'll you'll understand. All the high school athletes who are here tonight, nominated for any award or not, would you please stand? All the high school athletes, please stand. Okay, stay standing, please. Okay. And for those of you high school athletes, no, stay standing. I saw you sit down. Stay standing. Stand. Come on. St this is important. Stand. If you're a high school nominated athlete, please stand up, okay? Because we're going to do something here tonight. Because most of you are here with your parents, your family, your coaches, your administrators, okay, who have put in time, hours, years to get you to where you are today. So all the athletes now, you are going to give all the administrators, family, moms, and dads a standing ovation. You clap for everybody who's sitting down. Okay, now you can sit down. How do they go out and compete on the field, yet they're afraid to stand up in a room of 900 people where nobody knows where you are? How many people from Bonner's Ferry are here? Is the, are the lights on? Is anybody left in town? You're going to home to Sandpoint. You might want to leave five minutes earlier because those people are all going to be on the road. All right. Thank you for being here. Um, a few years ago, uh, the, the committee asked me, um, would you MC this? And I said, absolutely. Love to. Love to. Um, the first time we did it, I did it, it we ended at 1030. And I said, we got this is no, we can't do this anymore. Because, you know, some of you guys have got two hours to drive home. So we've kind of pared it down a little bit. So my goal is to honor all of the athletes who are here and be I personally be done by nine o'clock. OK, that's my goal. All right. So if I don't reach my goal, I'm going to blame all of you who got awards for not getting up here fast enough and getting back to your chairs. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Um, we will get to our high school and college awards, but we want to honor the people who are sitting up here tonight who are part of this class. And you can go into the program and see all the unbelievable athletes, coaches, administrators who are part of the North Idaho Hall of Fame. And for to do a Hall of Fame, for 62 years is amazing. Because if you look around areas now, local community hall of fames are fading. They're not, they're going away. People just aren't want to be part of it. To be here, to see four more people inducted, yeah, it's very special. Uh, we're going to start tonight off with our hall of fame inductions. Um, these four individuals have been honored. They were honored at the resort last night. Tonight is their official induction. Uh, each will have a few words to stay. We're going to start with Randy Mueller. Randy has been around professional football for four decades. Born and raised in St. Mary's, he played quarterback for the Lumberjacks and then Linfield College in McMinnville, Oregon. As a senior in 1982, he helped Linfield win the NAIA Division II National Championship and was named the MVP of the title game. A year later, he began a long career in professional football, first with Seattle, New Orleans, Miami, and San Diego. He was also involved into, in the American Football and or the American Alliance of American Football and the XFL. He's also a great guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Randy Mueller.
Thanks, Dennis. Um, first off, I got to tell you guys, this whole room makes me smile. It is awesome to be here. Um, Dennis mentioned it. I grew up in St. Mary's. So I was one of you kids 40 years ago, okay? So I'm telling you, the future can be bright. Growing up in a small town is not a problem. It's not a, a, a hindrance. It can actually be a great reward because of the experiences and things you get to do that kids in big cities don't. I, I always, everybody always says, you grew up in St. Mary's. There's not even a stoplight in town. And you had 87 people in your graduating class. Guess what? I knew all 87 and the class of juniors and the class of sophomores. And because you're in a small setting, like a lot of you kids are, you know everybody. So you have to learn the skills that help you with life. You get to communicate with everybody. You can't act like an idiot because guess what? Your, team, your classmates are going to hold you accountable. In big cities, they don't do that. People come and go from big high schools all around the country. They don't get to have the relationships you guys have. So that part of it's exciting for me. Um, being honored in the North Idaho Hall of Fame is, is something that I am humbled by. I think it's, it's awesome to be able to come home and be rewarded by the people you grew up with. And I, I've got stories about many people in this room, committee members, board members, all of it. Yeah, that probably means I've been around a while, but it's been outstanding for me to come the last couple of days and, and get to experience this with my friends, my family. My wife's also a St. Mary's girl. Um, my friends at my table have St. Mary's ties. I know I saw a couple names on the sheet tonight of St. Mary's kids. So I'm going to take 10 seconds here. You kids, make sure and come say hello to me sometime tonight. Just shake hands. I want to know who you are. I want to meet you. Uh, there's only a couple. I know Barnes Ferry is the show, but there's a couple St. Mary's kids here, so I'm taking a little editorial detour. Come find me. I want to say hello. Um, kids nowadays live a different life than we all grew up around here. Um, it's, I think, 100% harder. Um, it's the, the spotlight is on you. You feel at times uh, that, and you also feel isolated. I get it. Social media has changed the way all of you live. We didn't live and grow up in times like you guys. But just know people understand that. And there are some things that I think you can do now still that are going to help you going forward that I think are big. And I didn't learn this till I got to college, but the fact that you can go advance your hand, meet people, look them in the eye, just basic things in life that some of us take for granted are really important. And I'll say this, I grew up in St. Mary's. I got a job as a ball boy for the Seahawks when I was 17, when I was a junior in high school at St. Mary's. I had no idea 20 years later I was gonna be the boss. But along the way, if you meet enough people and look them in the eye and shake their hands, anything is possible. Just trust me. So you don't have to come from a big accoladed school to get those opportunities. You can make your own opportunities. There's four people up here that, trust me, made their own opportunities. And like Dennis said, the stories are crazy. We didn't know each other before last night. But I'm indebted to these guys as my cohorts entering this group. It, it, again, makes me smile. So one quick message to parents, and then I'll get out of here. Um, when we played ball in the 70s and 80s in high school, in junior high, coaching was different. Coaches could actually coach us. And I would say coaches were not only coaches, they were mentors to us, but a lot of times it wasn't the hugs and kisses and, and a lot of the positive reinforcement. So as parents, my only suggestion is, and I have a daughter, she's grown, um, let your kids be coached. That's all I can say. Let them be coached by the people that are around them. They, the kids know right from wrong. Coaches want to do things right. Let them be coached. Don't worry if their dauber gets down one day. Send them back the next day, okay? It's okay. Nobody's out to get your kids, and I'm not saying that's the case. I just want, I wish kids could be coached like they were a while back, because guess what? It taught us to have some thick skin. It taught us skills that 
advanced us as adults. We learn lessons that I don't know if kids get to learn them anymore uh, because we're protective of you guys. And I understand that. I have a daughter. I protected her too. But just keep that in mind, parents, that coaches coach for a reason and allow your kid to go coached. And you know what? If he gets yelled at one day or she gets yelled at one day, trust me, she'll be back tomorrow. That's the whole thing is get them to come back tomorrow and they'll be better for it. But just a couple notes. And, and I appreciate you guys. This is awesome. I'm going to stay till the end. My wife may hate me, but I'm going to be here at the end. And any of you guys I can meet and, and shake your hands with, please come find me. So thank you very much. Our next inductee is a longtime basketball official, Bill Bope. Bill ran up and down the basketball court for 36 years as a high school basketball official before he retired in 2021. And I know some of you old timers remember him and probably booed him at one time or the other. He also spent 13 years as an official in junior college games for the Scenic West and the NWAC conferences. He's a graduate of Sandpoint High School, where he did play basketball. In 1984, he officiated his first high school basketball game, then went on to work 38 Idaho high school state basketball tournaments, 20 on the boys' side, 18 on the girls' side. Ladies and gentlemen, another one of our inductees this year, Bill Bope. Thanks, Dennis. Wow, 36 years. My God, it flew right by, but I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I want to thank the Hall of Fame Committee for putting on this fantastic event. I'm so honored to be in the Hall of Fame. You wouldn't believe it. It's, it's just such, such a great honor. And to my fellow inductees, Jackie, Dara, and Randy, congratulations. Last night was incredible. It was the stories and everything that were told was fantastic. I had a lot of family members here last night uh, to support me going in and actually only one's here tonight. My better half of 27 years, Raina, is sitting back over there somewhere. Thanks, you see her. The, the other family members, uh, I uh, said something about watching a couple basketball games tonight. I don't know who's playing. I, maybe some of you guys do, but uh, that's that's where they went. So anyway, <laughs> officiating has been a big part of my life. Uh, it's given me many rewards. Uh, I've met so many people and, and, and did a sport that I love for so many years. It's made lifetime friendships. And for that, I'm that's I'm most thankful for that. It's it's amazing. I want to congratulate the schools, the coaches, and all the student athletes tonight. This is what it's about, you guys. Um, it's obvious that to me that everyone that is here being honored tonight has a great work ethic. And with your impeccable work ethic, I believe anything you guys decide to do, guys and gals in the future, you're going to be very successful. And with that, I'm going to finish up. I'm going to just throw a little pitch here. A lot of you may know there is a nationwide shortage of officials. And I think if any of you want to put the striped shirt on, you'll be open. You'll be welcome with open arms. So again, thank you. Thank you very much. Our third inductee is one of the most decorated track athletes ever at the University of Idaho. Jackie Ross Maddox won 10 Big Sky Conference track titles and was a three-time Big Sky Indoor Track Athlete of the Year in her amazing career. The Kingstown native was at Idaho during the 1989 through 1992 seasons and won three conference titles in both the outdoor and indoor triple jumps. She also won two outdoor long jump titles, one outdoor long jump title, and along with a heptathlon title. Jackie became the first woman for the country of St. Vincent and Grenadines to compete in the Summer Olympics, where she finished 26th in the long jump in the 1988 Games. Ladies and gentlemen, another one of our inductees this year in the class of 2024, Jackie Ross Maddox.
I have a fan club. Yay. <laughs> well, I only have two minutes, so I'm going to make it quick. Just want to say thank you to the North Idaho Athletic Hall of Fame for recognizing and giving me an opportunity to be up here among these amazing uh, individuals, uh, my fellow inductees, uh, Bill, Randy, Dara. Congratulations to you guys and to the uh, North Idaho Athletic Board members. Thank you very much for all your hard work and dedication to our student athletes and coaches and your staff member. Thank you very much for everything that you're doing for us tonight. A little, um, just wanna say to my fellow uh, athletes, um, you guys put in the hard work, you made the commitment and you are getting recognized tonight, celebrate it. Enjoy every moment of it. And try to sign up with the vandals. <laughs> uh, most of you might be seniors, juniors, I don't know. But it's a wonderful school. And I'll be happy there. So please... When you're looking, give us a chance. Be a vandal. Please. I tried it with my kids. I have four of them sitting here. There we go. I have four of them sitting here tonight, and I'm still hoping that I'll have one. I raised my kids to make their own decisions, and I'm going to support them but we are trying hard to get one. And I have one more left. And Greg, our dearest friend, we are doing the lobbying. So parents, start doing the lobbying too. Go Vandals. Who's the youngest over of, of the four? You don't have to stand up. You do have your Idaho application in, right? Yeah, okay. I don't like your chances of not going there. All right, good luck. All right. Our final inductee tonight is Dara Eggers, who had an outstanding career as a high school athlete, a coach, and an administrator. Dara grew up in Beauville and attended nearby Deary High School, where he was a four-year letter winner in football, basketball, and track. He was a two-time All-State football player and the Class A4 Player of the Year. For you young people, the letter used to be before the number. Now they never mind. All right. Uh, he was that player of the year in 1982 and won numerous state medals and track. After ankle surgeries cut his football career short at the University of Idaho, uh, he started his 32-year education career at Clearwater Valley High School in 1992. He accepted the head coaching football position at his alma mater, where he led the Mustangs uh, for 15 years, averaging eight wins a season. He then spent 20 years as principal and athletic director at the school. Our fourth and final inductee of 2024, Dara Eggers. Oh, thank you very much. I am honored and extremely humbled to be standing here this evening. I was a small school athlete. My entire 32 years in education was in small schools. When I received the call that I had been nominated, I was shocked as it never crossed my mind that something like this could happen. Obviously, anytime you receive an individual award like this, there are so many people that contributed to making it happen. I don't have time to thank all of them, but I need to address a few. First off, God has blessed me with wonderful and a supportive family. My parents, Gary and Karen Agers, my wonderful wife of 39 years, Elisa, my two sons, Dustin and Drew, who were both able to be here last night for our banquet. Dustin actually cut short a trip to Mexico and surprised us and flew in for this banquet. I'm thinking, I didn't raise that kid right because I would have stayed in Mexico instead of coming to North Idaho in the snowstorm. I'm also grateful for all my assistant coaches that I had over the years. 
specifically Jeff Pritchard, who was my right-hand man for many of those years. But none of this would have happened without great players. I was pretty strict, pretty black and white on many issues, and I had players that and I had players that bought into what we were trying to do. Big team, little me. It was a huge theme for what we were trying to do in all my years of coaching. The team is first, you are second. I know all my players didn't agree with some of the rules and the discipline that I tried to instill, but I still have kids that come up to me now and thank me for it. It's really making me old as I see some of my former players out here that are here with their children getting honored tonight. Uh, it's amazing to see this. Also, I, I saw a couple of our old cheerleaders here. Yes. So I, I want you guys to know those, those years back there were just special. I, I really cherish them. Winning awards and state titles are wonderful. But as I get older, I acknowledge that family and relationships are much more important. If I have any advice to give the student athletes here tonight, and this kind of goes back to what Dennis mentioned at the start, um, first, athletes, give your parents and grandparents and families a big hug. Let them know you love them and you appreciate the hours they spent taking you to activities and all the support they give you. Secondly, let your coaches know that you appreciate them. Whether you agree or disagree with how they do things, they spend an unbelievable amount of time away from their families coaching. And the third thing is just something I picked up over the years of being administrator at Erie. Um, many of you here tonight have scholarship offers and the ability to play at the next level. But for those of you that don't, and you have the desire to try and play at the college level, my suggestion is to pursue it. Even if you have to walk on, there are junior colleges all for nearly every sport in the Northwest. Um, also NAIA level football teams that take walk-ons. One of the greatest regrets I hear from former athletes is that they didn't give it a shot at the next level. I have stories of kids that did try and came back saying, wow, those players are a lot faster, bigger than I thought. And I can't believe how much time and work the school put in. This use isn't for me. I've also have stories of athletes that went and stuck it out, worked their way up the depth chart, had a wonderful career. My point is simply this, give it a shot if you have the desire. You do not want to have regrets later in life. In closing, I want to congratulate all the other Hall of Fame recipients and thank the Hall of Fame board for putting on such an amazing banquet. Having Mark Schlereth here tonight is, as our keynote is amazing, I think. I, I was so excited when I saw his name. Um, last night's inductee ceremony exceeded my expectations. It was so special and something I will cherish the rest of my life. Lastly, I want to thank Darren Malm of the nominating committee for helping make this weekend happen and for myself and for my family. Thank you. All right. You've met the class of 2024. As we told you in the program, there are all the other inductees, and if you did not see, there are all pictures of them out as you came in. But before we go move on, can I can we get any member of the Idaho North Idaho Hall of Fame to please stand if you're here today? Joe, John, John, yeah. Not only are these four gentlemen who stood up in the Hall of Fame, they're also on the committee for the Hall of Fame. This means something to them, too. All right. Um, our featured speaker tonight, um, and I think you're going to enjoy his message, is former University of Idaho and NFL uh, star Mark Schlereth. And I'm going to use star. I know he doesn't like that, but I don't care. Um, Mark was a key component to the Vandals football success in the mid and 1980s. Following his senior year, he was selected in the 10th round of the 1989 draft, a round that doesn't exist in the NFL anymore. It only goes seven. Um, he started his 12-year professional career with the Redskins. He became the first player from the state of Alaska to play in the NFL, where he spent six seasons with Washington and then spent six more with Denver. He played on three Super Bowl championship teams and was a two-time Pro Bowl selection. After his playing days, he started in the broadcast career first with ESPN, 
then on the radio where he currently does a radio show in Denver, a talk show. And then in 2017, he joined Fox Sports, where you can hear him every Sunday calling an NFL game. Some of you may have seen him or remember him. Personally, I didn't, but you might, as Rock Hoover in the soap opera The Guiding Light. Apparently, some people did remember you. Mark, I didn't know that. All right. Or himself, playing himself on the HBO series Ballers. Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure, as always, to get to listen to this guy, and I hope you enjoy him as well, Mark Schlereth. Thank you, Dennis. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm honored to stand before you guys, and I got to tell you, there's a couple of things I want to say right off the bat. First, to John Yarno, to Ken Hobart. You guys gave a kid from Alaska a belief that he could play in the National Football League. I'm forever in your debt. I mean that. I've never had an opportunity to tell you that, but I mean that. Watching you guys play professional football, being University of Idaho alum, gave me a hope that I could live out my childhood dream. And I don't think that would have happened had it not been for you guys and guys like Sam Merriman and some of the other guys, Jerry Kramer, that played from the University of Idaho in the National Football League. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I also want you guys to know I love Jesus, but I do cuss a little bit. So I want to apologize for that right off the bat. And I want to say this. I'm a gracious loser, but I'm a dick when it comes to winning. Eck, thank you. I talk so much shit based upon the University of Idaho. As a matter of fact, when you guys beat Eastern this year, the first call I made was to Yarbs with the Los Angeles Rams, and I said, get Cooper Cup on the phone. Cooper Cup got on the phone. I go, you suck, and you owe me 20 bucks. So thank you, Eck, for giving a bunch of old vandals some excitement back in the University of Idaho. Hey, we've been given this opportunity to connect, right? And we live in a world, a society where we, I walk around, I travel around the country, I call games on the NFL, I'm in airports every week, and never have we been more connected through technology and less connected as people. I walk around through airports and people are connected to a four-inch iridescent screen. We've been given this moment of time tonight to connect, and what a blessing it is. I will tell you this. The guy who dies with the most Twitter followers gets buried. It doesn't matter. I tell my kids all the time when they pull out the phone, what are people you don't know doing right now? So we get this moment to connect with one another, and it is so, such a pleasure, such an honor to be here before you guys right now. I've got to tell you, by the way, John Freeze, my teammate at the University of Idaho, my teammate with the Washington Redskins, I love you, John. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Connection is important to me. Relationship is important to me. And you guys have such an unbelievable, the athletes here have such an unbelievable opportunity ahead of you, regardless if it's with athletics or any other venture in life. Let me just tell you something I've learned along the way. The man who loves to walk will walk a lot further than the man who loves the destination. Fall in love with the journey. And it's about relationship. I say it all the time. We are all in the relationship business. And if you're not in that business, you're going out of business. The key to success in life is to develop those relationships, to lean on one another, to be selfless for one another. That's the key to life, the key to championships. So a lot of you don't know my career. You don't know my journey. You see that I went to, you know, the NFL and I started for 12 years and I started on three Super Bowl championship teams, but I was retired from football as a junior at the University of Idaho. I had had so many injuries that Keith Gilbertson called me into his office and retired me. It was the most depressing moment of my life. All of a sudden, I went from being a football player to just being a student. And I struggled. And eventually, I had another surgery. It was like my seventh surgery at the University of Idaho. And eventually, as you, you tend to do when you're 20, 21, I started to heal up. 
started to work out again, started to lift again. And then I started to badger Keith Gilbertson and the administration to let me play. Just let me play my senior year. And I was such an annoying nuisance in the upstairs offices that eventually they relented. I have two different stories. I was taking a lot of communication courses at the time. And I was probably in some type of argumentative communication course. And I went to Keith Gilbertson's office and convinced him to let me play. Keith's story, and I owe Keith a, a debt of gratitude. Keith's story was I pinned him up against the wall in his office and choked him. I, I think it was the courses that I was taking that, that really got me over the top. But I was done playing. I came back my senior year. I made it through at a different position, switched over to the offensive line, made it through my senior year without injury. But I didn't have an agent. I didn't, have, um, I didn't get invited to the combine. I, I had nothing. So, again, this lifelong dream of mine to play in the National Football League looked like it was going to end. And one night I got a phone call from a North Idaho alum, a North Idaho Hall of Fame alum, Marvin Washington. Now, Marvin Washington came to the University of Idaho his senior season. He transferred from UTEP because he was a basketball player, and they canceled the basketball program at UTEP. So Marvin showed up on campus. He was six foot six and about 260 pounds chiseled from granite. And we're like, hey, you want to play on our football team? You're better than anybody we got. So he said, sure. So he played one year of college football, got 14 sacks, and he was a highly touted recruit. He was a guy that was speculated to go. They, they thought he'd go in the second or third round. So I'm sitting around the house that I lived in at the time with some of my other teammates. And my phone rings. And it's Marvin Washington. And Marvin says to me, hey, man, the Bengals are going to come here tomorrow morning to Kibbe Dome, 7 o'clock. Why don't you crash my workout? So I said, thanks, Marvin. Because he knew that I had a dream. And he was a selfless teammate that loved me. So I showed up to Marvin's, uh, to Marvin's workout, introduced myself to the Bengal scouts, begged them to let me work out. We went through the bench test. We went through the 40 test. We went through the eye shuttle test, the vertical jump. And I whipped Marvin's ass in every single one of those events. I mean, I crushed it. And I felt so good about my performance. Two nights later, my phone rings. It's Marvin. Hey, man, the Redskins are coming. Why don't you crash my workout? This went on 10 different times. Ten different times, I whipped Marvin's ass in every single drill. Ten different times, he called me. He loved me that much. You would think that after one time, and I crushed him, he wouldn't call me. He Ten straight times, he called me, and then teams started calling me. I would not have lived out my childhood dream of playing in the National Football League if it wasn't for Marvin Washington. I do not play. I do not get the opportunity if he didn't sacrifice. Success has so many fingerprints. And every person here tonight who is connected to North Idaho, who is connected to this community, who's connected to the University of Idaho, every one of you has a fingerprint on my life. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me the opportunity to live out my childhood dream. And I would not have played had it not been for Marvin Washington. But let me tell you something that happened to me. I single-handedly, I told you guys the other night, some of you weren't here for the story, I single-handedly won Super Bowl 32. It's an amazing story. I was incredible. Uh, I don't like to brag, but <laughs> I whipped ass and took names. Anyhow, so we win Super Bowl 32. Um, and I'm back in Denver in the training room in the offseason. Probably had some surgery. By the way, you know, I'm the only player in the history of the National Football League to win a Super Bowl on his birthday that corresponded with the number of Super uh, the number of the Super Bowl. I won Super Bowl 32 on my 32nd birthday, January 25th, 1998. The only player in the history of the league. To score a gami. I'm amazing. Anyhow, so I'm sitting in the training room. I'm sitting in the training room. And uh, I'm, you know, rehabbing some 
whatever injury I had at the time. And Mike Shanahan comes down, our head coach. He walks down, he grabs his piece of paper. He says, hey, listen. He goes, I need your advice on something. And, you know, I just finished probably my ninth year in the league or whatever it was. And I go, yeah, what do what you need to shoot, coach? He goes, listen, I need a rotational defensive lineman. He goes, a guy that can play DN, that can play D-tackle. Um, and he goes, I got a list of about seven, eight guys here. I don't really know any of them, but you've been in the league a long time. You've played against them all. He said, which guy would be the best guy for us to sign? He goes, now, I don't need the best player. I need the best human. I need the guy that best fits the Denver Bronco culture. So he hands me the list. First name I see, Marvin Washington. I said, sign him. He walks upstairs, signs Marvin Washington. Marvin Washington and I won Super Bowl 33 together as teammates for the Denver Broncos. So I do not play in the National Football League if it's not for Marvin Washington, and he does not win a Super Bowl if I don't get Mike to sign it. And that's the connection. That's the selflessness that creates championship organizations. One other quick story, another man who is incredibly influential, influential in my career, Dennis Erickson. Dennis Erickson, one of the great coaches, along with Gilby, with Eck, one of the great coaches. In, in 1997, after we won that Super Bowl, I was a free agent. Now, in 1995, I had flunked a physical in Chicago. I'd flunked a physical in Indianapolis. And I flunked a physical in Atlanta. And the doctor in Atlanta, as a matter of fact, said, and I'll never forget it. I was sitting in his office. And he said, you have the knees of an 80-year-old woman. No offense to 80-year-old women. And uh, he goes, I don't believe you play. And I go, well, I line up every, every Sunday. And um, anyhow, so I couldn't pass a physical. And Mike Shanahan ended up signing me. Well, in 1997, I was a free agent, and I was talking to Bobby Beathard, who was the GM of the San Diego Chargers at the time. He's the guy that drafted me in Washington. He said, hey, I want to bring you in, and uh, I want you to play for the Chargers. I was like, great. And he goes, but I need you to fly and take a physical. And I said, Bobby, I won't pass a physical. There's just no way I'm going to pass. I'll line up every Sunday and I'll play, but there's no way they'll pass me on a physical. So Bobby said, let you pass a physical. We can't sign you. And I go, well, then don't even – like, don't waste your time or your money and my time. I'm not coming out. So Dennis called me. And Dennis said, I want you to come here, help set a culture with the Seattle Seahawks. I want you to sign here. I like, I was great. Like, you know, put it, put something together. Well, at the time, Mike Shanahan was not only our head coach, but our general manager. And he put a contract offer on the table for me, but there was no signing bonus. And it was just veteran minimum wage. And Mike being the ruthless businessman that Mike is, and I love him. He's a dear friend. But he's like, you can't pass a physical. This is the only place you can play in the National Football League. We're the only ones that will let you play here. So I'm, you know, th then my, my whole career was not contract negotiation. It was organized begging. I'd be like, can I have more money? No. Please, can I have more money? No. You know, but, but seriously, I'd like more money. No. So that's how that went. So Dennis calls me. He wants me to sign with the Seahawks. And I go, great. Well, he calls me back and says, hey, man, Paul Allen nixed it said, with your injury history, the number of knee surgeries you had, you, you, there's no way he's going to sign you and have you play on turf. So I explained to Dennis my situation, that I had a contract offer with Washington or with uh, Denver standing, but there was no signing bonus, and it was based veteran minimum wage. I said, could you do me a favor, Dennis? Could you just send a contract over to my agent, Tom Condon, a fake one, and – I go, I won't sign it. I won't get you in any trouble. But just so I can have an offer. And Dennis hangs, he goes, no problem. Hangs up the phone. 20 minutes later, had an offer. And 10 minutes later after that, Mike Shanahan matched the offer from the Seahawks. It was a fake offer. <laughs> that is what relationship is all about. Dennis Erickson. Hey, listen, all, all joking aside and all the stories aside, um, just a couple of things before I take off here for you younger people. Um, let me just tell you, one of the favorite scriptures in, in the Bible for me is John 16, 33. I've told you this so that you may have peace. 
in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Let me let me tell you, in the New Testament, there's 110 scriptures that reference the trouble you're going to have. It is an absolute guarantee. It is a promise. It is not going to be easy. It is going to be hard. There is no question about it. But I just want to encourage you that even in the midst of those problems, you can find joy, you can find peace, and you can find success if you line up with like-minded people and go to work. Procrastination is man's arrogance that says God's going to give me a chance to do tomorrow what I should have done today. And if you're struggling, the magic pill that you're looking for is in the work that you're avoiding. Go to work. Put your nose to the grindstone and bust your ass and good things are going to happen. I, I got to tell you guys, as I close, thank you. Everybody here, North Idaho, thank you, University of Idaho. Um, you gave a kid an opportunity when nobody else would, and I got to live out a childhood dream. My dad told me when I was a little boy, find something you'd love to do. You'll never have to go to work. I haven't worked a day in my life, and I owe it all to you great folks, the University of Idaho, Shelly. When Shelly calls, she's like my wife. I answer. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Everybody, thank you. God bless you. I've done this a long time. This is the first guy I've ever seen to swear and get a standing ovation. So, does, does Coach Shanahan know that story? No, yeah, okay. Don't tell him that story. All right, okay, all right. Um, before we start our awards parts of the program, I want to remind everybody, make sure that you take a look at page 14 because that is all of our sponsors tonight. And again, if you do business with any of these sponsors, please thank them for making this night possible um, because those are the people that allowed us to do this and honor you. And it's a big, it's, it's important. We also want to make sure that you give a shout out to the guys at IdahoSports.com for live streaming this event as well. Gentlemen, thank you for doing that. Um, all right. Time now for what you most of you are here for, the awards. The awards will work tonight. We'll begin with the college awards and go to the high school awards. And then we'll go individual team coaches awards for high schools, then on to the Hagadon Character Awards. But for all the high school nominees, we want to remind you there will be a scholarship drawings. That's plural scholarship drawings for the Hagadon Character Award winners and for the award recipients as well. The only thing that you have to do, your names are already entered, but you have to be present here to win. And we'll do that at the end of our program tonight. All right. As a reminder, I will read the award category first, then each of the nominees. When you hear your name called, please stand. If I call a team name and you're part of that team, all of you from the team stand. After the nominees are read, I'll announce the winner. If you are the winner, please come up front to receive your award here and also your picture to be taken. And you can hold all your applause until all the awards. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to change this here. Let's, after I introduce all of the, all of the nominees, we'll give them all a round of applause. Then I'll announce the winner and you can applause for the winner. That just seems to be easier that way. All right. You ready? Wow. All right. Let's start with the college awards. The nominees for female team of the year are North Idaho soccer, North Idaho volleyball, North Idaho softball, Idaho soccer, and Lewis Clark State College basketball. Our winner tonight is the University of Idaho women's soccer team.
Vandals won the Big Sky title for the first time in school history with a 12-5-2 record, including a 5-2-1 mark in the conference. The Vandals also won their final four regular season matches to finish second and won the Big Sky tournament by one goal to claim the title and advance on to the NCAA tournament. Congratulations to Idaho women's soccer. For the male team of the year, the nominees are North Idaho Wrestling, North Idaho Golf, Idaho Football, Idaho Tennis, Lewis Clark State College Baseball, Lewis Clark State College Basketball. Our male team of the year is. Idaho Vandal football. Vandals went six and two in the Big Sky, nine and four overall, advanced to the quarterfinals of the FCS playoffs. Idaho finished tied for second in the Big Sky, beating second ranked Montana State and fourth ranked Sacramento State in the regular season. Idaho also beat an FBS team in the University of Nevada during the regular season. Idaho was the fourth seed in the FCS playoffs. Congratulations to the University of Idaho men's football team. Time now for our female coach of the year. The nominees are Brittany Tillman, North Idaho College Volleyball. Shay Fuson Chapman, NIC Volleyball. Kelsey Parson, NIC Soccer. Jeremy Clevenger, Idaho Soccer. Kaylin Orlandi, Lewis Clark State College Basketball. And the Women's Coach of the Year is Brittany Tillman, North Idaho College Volleyball. The first-year coach led her team to a 32-2 and overall record, a perfect 16-0 and in conference play. NIC made it to the conference championship game where it lost to Lynn Benton. The only two losses were to the undefeated Lynn Benton team. The Cardinals won 26 matches in a row, and at one point won 19 matches in straight 3-0 sweeps. Brittany Tillman is our female coach of the year. Brittany could not be here today. She's in Hawaii. If you want to boo her, go ahead. I'm not, I'm not going to stop you. All right. The male coach of the year. Our nominees are Derek Booth, North Idaho College Wrestling. Russell Grove, North Idaho College Golf. Jason Eck, University of Idaho Football. Daniel Hangsteffer, Idaho Tennis. Jake Taylor, Lewis Clark State College Baseball. And Austin Johnson, Lewis Clark State College Basketball. Our male coach of the year is Idaho Vandal football coach, Jason Eck. Second year at the University of Idaho, Eck led the Vandals to a 9-4 and record in a visit to the quarterfinals of the FCS playoffs, including wins, as we said, over number two, Montana State, and number four, Sacramento State.
Jason Eck is our male coach of the year. Congratulations. Time for our female athlete of the year. Our nominees are Casey Chavez, North Idaho soccer. Abby Brooks, North Idaho softball. Maya Sylvester, the University of Idaho track. Jenna Carpenter, Lewis Clark State College track. And Callie Stevens, Lewis Clark State College basketball. We have two winners tonight. Maya Sylvester from the University of Idaho and Callie Stevens from Lewis and Clark State College. Maya won two Big Sky Conference track titles last spring. She won the shot put title in the conference outdoor meet, and then the winner, she won the weight throw with a school record. She was also named the conference field athlete of the week twice during the year. Callie was the MVP of the Cascade Collegiate Conference to become the first player ever to win the award three consecutive years. She was also a second-team NAI All-American, averaging 17.3 points a game, had 102 assists and 55 steals, and leading the Warriors to the NAIA National Tournament. Congratulations to Maya and to Callie. Time for our Male Athlete of the Year. Our nominees are Carter Gordon, Lewis Clark State College Indoor Track. Francisco Baskin, University of Idaho Tennis. Hayden Hatton, University of Idaho Football. And Josh McAirton, McAirton North Idaho College Golf. Our winner tonight is the University of Idaho wide receiver, Hayden Hatton. <laughs> Hayden caught 94 balls for 1,231 yards and nine touchdowns. He averaged 94.7 yards reception per game. He was a unanimous first team all Big Sky selection and was named to the second team national AP All-American team. Hayden Hatton, our winner tonight. All right, time to hand out our newest awards. Uh, we started this last year. Uh, it's honors a graduate from a North Idaho high school who has gone on to compete outside of Northern Idaho and is worthy of recognition. Um, and in this, our winner tonight, continuing their outstanding athletic performance after a North Idaho high school career, the award goes to Ridge Lovett at the University of Nebraska wrestling team. Ridge graduated from Pulse Falls High School as a junior for the Cornhuskers, recently placing sixth in the NCAA national championships at 149 pounds. He won the Big Ten Championship, placing first in two other tournaments during the season. He went 27-4 and four during the season and was named All-American. Congratulations to Ridge Lovett. Time now for our high school awards. Nominees are accepted throughout the year, and each award is then given to our, our nomination, I should say, is given to our Hall of Fame committee that meets and selects the finalists, and then from the finalists, they select a winner. Information from all league and all state teams, as well as umpires, officials, committee members who watch games. So it's quite an accomplishment just to be named as the finalist. When I read your name as a finalist, please stand again. The winner then, when we announce them, will come up, receive their award, and have their picture taken. We're going to start with the 2023 Spring Awards. All spring sports finalists are from last spring, and we realize that some of the finalists have graduated or are away at school and are able to join us tonight. However, some have sent family or friends in their place. So if you are here and your student athlete has won this, please come up, pick up the award, and pose for a picture as well. All right, we'll start with the Class 3A, 2A, 1A Boys Golf. 
Our finalists tonight are Stephen Paul Kellogg, Seth Swallows, St. Mary's, Bo Jones, Lakeside, Luke Butler, Priest River, and C.J. Elliott, Genesis Prep. Our winner tonight is Stephen Paul of Kellogg High School. Stephen shot a two-day total of 132, 132 to win the individual state title and lead the Wildcats to a third-place finish. His 132 total was eight under par, and he won the state championship individual honors by 10 shots. He also won the district title by shooting 65. Hey, hey, Stephen. Steven, you shot 65 of the district title. Keep going. Just keep going. Keep going. If I shot 65, I'd have to figure out what I was going to shoot on the backside. My goodness. All right. Girls golf. Uh, our nominees are Avery Bear of Bonner's Ferry. Braylon Bear from Bonner's Ferry. Malia Miller from Timberlake High School. Kendra Korsik from Kellogg. And Julia Grimaldo from Orofino. Our winner tonight is Braylon Bear of Bonner's Ferry. Braylon was the medalist at the 3A State Idaho Tournament with a two-round total of 153 and helped the Badgers claim the state championship as well. She had rounds of 75 and 78 to win the state title by six shots. She also won the district championship by five strokes. Girls Golf, our winner is Braylon Bear. Boys Tennis. Our nominees tonight are Tate Burkholder from Coeur d'Alene Charter. Owen Sharp from Coeur d'Alene Charter. Cole Andrus from Lakeland. Brady Hanna from Lakeland. And Dylan Gomez from Lewiston. Our winner tonight is Dylan Gomez of Lewiston High School. Dylan was the district champion for the third straight year, and he placed second at the 5A state tennis tournament for the second consecutive year. In districts, he went undefeated and didn't lose more than three games in any one match. Dylan Gomez from Lewiston High School. Girl, girls Tennis is our next category. Our nominees are Alexandria Montgomery from Coeur d'Alene Charter. Neva Rasika from Sandpoint High School. Caitlin Combs from Coeur d'Alene Charter. And Madison Nesbitt from Lake City. Our winner tonight is Caitlin Combs of Coeur d'Alene Charter. This past spring, she placed second in the state 3A, 2A, 1A meet and helped Coeur d'Alene Charter to a fifth place finish at state. As a sophomore, Caitlin was the top seed and rolled to straight sets wins in her first two matches at state before losing the title match. Our winner tonight Caitlin Combs. Boys Baseball, 5A, 4A. The nominees are Bryce Stockton from Coeur d'Alene, 
Chris Rickard from Lewiston. Cooper Smith, Lake City. Eric Bomba, Lake City. Joe Decor, Lake City. And Levi Anderson, Moscow. Our winner tonight is Joe Decor. Joe helped Lake City get back to the state 5A tournament for the first time in seven years. A catcher who hit 403 with two homers, 22 ribbies, and 24 runs scored this season. He earned the MVP award in the Inland Empire Baseball League and is currently continuing his baseball career in Hawaii at Chaminade University. Our winner tonight, Joe Decor. Don't you find it ironic that the people who aren't here are all in Hawaii? All right. Uh, boys baseball, 3A, 2A, 1A. The nominees are Trey Bateman, Bonners Ferry. Bodie Howell, Orofino. Sam Lindsley, Grangeville. Dominic Holden, Troy, and Jackson Vowles Potlatch. The winner of tonight's award is Dominic Holden of the Troy Trojans. Dominic led Troy to the state championship this year, was selected as the Idaho Statesman's 1A Player of the Year. The left-hander posted an ERA of, get this, .14. earned run average, which was the lowest in the state in any classification. How many runs did you give up this year? Like two? He doesn't even know. You know what? When you got a one a point one four ERA, it doesn't matter, right? He went six and two during the year, which was his sophomore season. Congratulations, Dominic Holden. Hey, Dominic, thanks for not going to Hawaii for us. All right, thank you. Girls softball, 5A, 4A. The nominees are Christine Schmidt from Coeur d'Alene, Jenna Barney from Lewiston, Kaylee Colden, Lake City, and Megan Highfield, Moscow. Our winner tonight, the 5A, 4A softball player of the year, is Christine Schmidt of Coeur d'Alene. Christine was named the MVP of the Indian Empire League and helped the Vikings to the district championship. She pitched all but seven innings for the Vikings during the season and posted a 19-5 record with a 1.50 earned run average, and she had 212 strikeouts. Congratulations, Christine Schmidt. Girls softball, 3A, 2A, 1A. The nominees are Logan Walsh, Timberlake, Aaliyah Dykes, Timberlake, Tacey Watkins, St. Mary's, Jessica Catola from Clearwater Valley, Kendra Meyer from Genesee, and Brindley Lowe, also of Genesee. Our winner tonight is Kendra Meyer from Genesee. Kendra was named the named to the first team all state selection. As a sophomore, she won four games at the state tournament to help the Bulldogs, who were seated sixth in the eight team field, capture a state championship.
Congratulations to Kendra Meyer. Girls track, 5A, 4A. The nominees are Anastasia Peters, Post Falls. Capri Sims, Post Falls. Ivy Smith, Sandpoint. Devin McDaniel, Sandpoint. And Zoe Kessinger, Lewiston. We have two winners. Anastasia Peters of Post Falls and Zoe Kessinger of Lewiston. Anastasia won the 3,200 meters in 10 minutes, 42.92 seconds at state. She also placed sixth in the 1,600 meters and 13th in the 800 meters. That is a t that's a rough day, 3,200, 1,600, 800 meters. Zoe won the discus title with a throw of 136 feet, which was nearly 17 feet longer than her nearest competitor. She also placed fifth in the shot put. Congratulations to our winners, Anastasia Peters of Post Falls, Zoe Kessinger of Lewiston. Track and field girls track 3A, 2A, 1A. The nominees are... Candace Beck from Highland. Annabelle Carr from Coeur d'Alene Charter. Asia Abubakari from Bonners Ferry. Was I even close? Was I close? Uh-oh, I missed the first name but got the last name right? All right. Can't win. Uh, McKenna Kozella from Coeur d'Alene Charter. Lindy Kessinger from Orofino, and Sage Elvin from Prairie. This category, we also have two winners. McKenna uh, Kozella of Coeur d'Alene Charter and Asha Abu... Asha Abubakari from Bonners Ferry. Asha claimed the 3A shot put title with a throw of 42 feet, one and a half inches. That's the second best throw in any classification. She also won the discus at 132 feet, two inches. Didn't stop there. Second in the long jump and 12th in the triple jump. McKenna turned it on in the distance races, winning the 1,600 meters in 5 minutes, 11.93 seconds, and the 3,200 in 10 minutes, 56.73. Congratulations to our two winners, McKenna Kozella from Coeur d'Alene Charter and Asha, Asha, Asha Abubakari from Bonners Ferry. Asha, I humbly apologize to you, all right? The rest of you over there, not so much, all right? Boys track, 5A, 4A. Trevin Miller, Post Falls. James White, Lewiston. Trevor Cogley, Lake City. Rusty Lee, Sandpoint. And Dylan Reeder, Moscow. I don't think I've ever seen this before. We have three winners in this category. Trevor Miller of Post Falls, James White of Lewiston, and Trevor Cogley of Lake City. All three of our athletes won a state title in one event and placed in another at the 5A meet. Trevor won the shot put with a throw of 57 feet, three and a quarter inches. He was also third in the discus. James won the discus with a throw of 170 feet, eight inches, and was fourth in the shot put. Trevor won the 400 in 48.3 seconds and finished third in the 200 meters.
Congratulations to all three of our winners, Trevor Miller, James White, and Trevor Cogley. I don't know if anybody can see this. I highlight first names in orange, last names in yellow. This is the next category. Pray for me. 3A, 2A, 1A, boys track. The nominees are KS TB, Timberlake. Debbie, I told you to pray. You didn't pray hard enough for me. That was the easy one. All right, okay. Our next nominee, and again, I apologize here. Um, Siamone. I'm waiting for a correction because I don't think I got that one right. Tui Kolovatu. All right, from Timberlake. All right. Uh, Matthias McLean from Priest River. Wyatt MacArthur from Timberlake. Brady Cox from Cameo. And Joel Snedden from Orofino. Our winner tonight is Brady Cox of Cameo. Brady won the 110 hurdles at the 1A classification with a time of 15.77. Then he won the high jump with a jump of 6 foot 2 inches. He also finished third in the 300 meter hurdles. Our winner, Brady Cox of Cami. All right, now to our fall awards. Just a reminder, don't forget the Idaho Activities Association moved the 5A, 4A golf season to the fall and kept the 3A, 2A, 1A in the spring. All right, so these are the fall awards for the 5A, 4A golf. Girls golf, the nominees are Taylor Meyer, Sandpoint. Stella Dietz, Coeur d'Alene. Sophia Vignala from Coeur d'Alene. Molly Siebley from Lewiston. And Maddie Riley from Coeur d'Alene. Our winner tonight is Molly Siebley of Lewiston. Molly finished second at the 5A state tournament with rounds of 77 and 75 for a 152 total. She missed winning the individual state championship by one shot. During her play at the district tournament, Molly matched par at 72. She also was the medalist in every regular season dual meet that Lewiston participated in this fall. Our winner is Molly Siebley. Is, there, is anybody? Are they here? They're in Hawaii. Who actually thought that was a funny line, right? All right. We'll make sure that she gets that award. All right. Boys golf this fall, 5A, 4A. The nominees are Trey Lambert, Lake City. Grant Potter, Coeur d'Alene. Max Hosfeld, Lake City. Trey Nip, Coeur d'Alene. And Chase Lovell, Moscow. We have two winners in this classification. They are Trey Lambert of Lake City and Chase Lovell of Moscow.
Trey finished third of the state tournament in Lewiston with rounds of two under 70 and one under 71. He also had a one under 71 to win medalist honors at the district tournament on the same course. Now, Chase, he attends Potlatch High School, but the loggers don't have a golf team, so he plays for Moscow High School in the golf program. Chase won the district title and finished second as well at state. Congratulations to our two winners, Trey Lambert of Lake City and Chase Lovell of Potlatch playing for Moscow. Girls cross country. The nominees are Kaylin Meisner, Post Falls. Talia bon uh, Bonville, Post Falls. Hazel Kunkel, Lake City. Olivia May, Coeur d'Alene. And Vanessa McLaughlin from Timberlake. Our winner tonight is Olivia May of Coeur d'Alene High School. Olivia posted the fastest time in the state tournament among all runners in northern Idaho, regardless of classification. She took 11th in the 5A state meet, running the course in just under 19 minutes. She also ran the fastest district time of any of the local runners. Once again, our winner is Olivia May. Boys Cross Country, the nominees are Max Servi Skinner, Coeur d'Alene, Lachlan May, Coeur d'Alene, Zachary Servi Skinner, Coeur d'Alene, Jacob King, Coeur d'Alene, Mitchell Reitz, Coeur d'Alene, and Jacob Barnhart, Timberlake. Our winner tonight is Max Servi Skinner of Coeur d'Alene High School. Max led his team to the state championship and his sixth place finish was the best time of any North Idaho runner. You remember we also had four others nominated from Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene had their top five runners finish in the top 16 positions it's why they were a runaway state champion. So we did. So we. Who is this young man? Okay, Wyatt. Thank you for being up here. Make sure Max gets that. Don't put a tape, piece of tape over it with your name on it, all right? Girls soccer, the nominees are Avery Lathan from Lewiston, Macy Lilliquist, Lake City, Taylor Miller, Lake City, Cecilia Dingnan, Sandpoint, Aaliyah Strock, Sandpoint, and Alexis Shepard from Coeur d'Alene Charter. Our winner tonight is Aaliyah Strock from Sandpoint High School. Aaliyah was the most valuable player of the 4A Inland Empire League, and she helped Sandpoint to the state championship this season. She served as team captain, and she also earned first-team All-State honors. Our winner is Aaliyah Strock of Sandpoint High School. Boys soccer, the nominees are Jacob Molina from Lake City, Connor Jump, Lake City, Jet 
Longenecker from Sandpoint, Gavin Schoner, Lake City, Kai Lon Lonecker, Sandpoint, and Eli Newell of Bonners Ferry. Our winner tonight is Jacob Molina of Lake City. Jacob was named the MVP of the Inland Empire League as a junior. He also earned first-team All-State honors by a vote from the coaches throughout the state. Our winner tonight, Jacob Molina of Lake City. Girls Volleyball, 5A, 4A. The nominees are Gracie Legg of Coeur d'Alene, Addie McCarcher of Lewiston, Kyle Mundy of Post Falls, Zaya Munyer of Lakeland, and Addie Joe Hawking of Lakeland. Our winner tonight is Kylie Mundy of Post Falls. <laughs> Kylie was uh, selected the MVP of the Inland Empire League. She was named the 5A Player of the Year by the Idaho Statesman, and she was named a 5A First Team All-Stater for the third straight year. Kylie Mundy of Post Falls. Girls Volleyball, 3A, 2A, 1A. The nominees are uh, Helena Ray from Bonners Ferry. Maddie Cheney from Kellogg. Brittany Phillips from Wallace. Tia Hendrick from Wallace. Eloise Shelton from Clark Fork. Autumn Charvez from Mullen. Jolie Eklund from Troy. Derricka Morgan from Troy. Kennedy Kirk from Deary. And Haley Taylor from Kendrick. Our winner tonight is Jolie Eklund of Troy. Joe Lee was the co-MVP of the White Pine League and helped the Trojans claim the White Pine League title. She was also named to a first-team All-State selection. Jolie Eklund is our winner tonight. Girls Swimming, the nominees are McKenna Mamola, Lakeland. Maylin Sobeck, Lake City. Riley Taylor, Lake City. Quinn Taylor, Lake City. Our winner tonight is McKenna Mimola of Lakeland. McKenna was a double winner at the state 4A meet. She won the 200 free in a classification meet record of 156.17. She also won the 500 free in a 5 minutes, 7.6 seconds, which is also a 4A record. She also helped the 200 free and 400 free relay teams to fourth place finishes at state. McKenna Maymola of Lakeland High School, congratulations. 
boys swimming. The nominees are Elijah Brown, Lake City. Eli Shaw, Lake City. Isaac Thorpe, Coeur d'Alene. And Michael Mamola from Lakeland. Our winner tonight is Michael Mamola of Lakeland. Michael won the 200 freestyle in 1 minute, 47.02 seconds. He also won the 500 free in 4 minutes, 37.5 seconds. Michael also swam the anchor legs on the third place medley relay team and the fourth place 400 freestyle team. I'd say it's a pretty good day in the Mamola family, huh? Football, 5A, 4A. The nominees are Asher Bowie, Post Falls. Max Frank, Sandpoint. Cody Brewster, Sandpoint. Bryson Muckenthaler, Coeur d'Alene. Camden DeGraw, Coeur d'Alene. Shea Robertson, Coeur d'Alene. Tevin Burns, Post Falls. And Owen Forsman, Lakeland. Our winner tonight is Shea Robertson of Coeur d'Alene High School. While Shea makes his way from the parking lot, I'll give you some of his. Shea, Shea was the MVP of the Inland Empire League. The senior linebacker made 173 tackles. That's number one in the state, including 26 tackles for loss. He was named first team All-State selection and will continue his college football career next year at Eastern Washington University. Our winner, Shay Robertson. Three A four, a three A two A one A football. The nominees are Cooper Lenz, Timberlake, Trey Gibson, St. Mary's, Jack Driscoll, Logos, Gage Crow, Lewis County, Ty Keep, Kendrick. John Pruitt, Mullen St. Regis, and Porter Whipple, Camion. We have two winners in this classification, Trey Gibson of St. Mary's and Ty Keep of Kendrick. Trey was the Central Idaho League's Player of the Year at St. Mary's and the first-team All-State selection. The senior running back rushed for 1,676 yards and 17 touchdowns despite missing three games. Ty also tore up defenses. The senior quarterback completed 66% of his passes for 2,440 yards and 40 touchdowns. He also scored 11 touchdowns on the ground as Kendrick rolled to an undefeated season and his third state straight title. He was also named the Idaho Statesman 1A Player of the Year. Congratulations to our two winners, Trey Gibson of St. Mary's and Ty Keep of Kendrick. On to our winner awards. Our winner awards are for the 23-24 season that just recently completed, and we'll start with girls basketball. 5A, 4A, the nominees are Avery Waddington of Lake City, Tegan Colvin of Coeur d'Alene, Sophie Zufelt of Lake City, Landry Simon of Lakeland, and Carly Banks of Sandpoint.
Our winner tonight is Tegan Colvin of Coeur d'Alene High School. Tegan was a first-team All-League performer, also selected as the first-team All-State player for the second straight season. She's headed to University of Nevada, Las Vegas. She averaged 17.8 points, 5.5 rebounds, almost 4 assists per game, and helped the Vikings to win their second state state championship. Tegan Colvin. Three A, two A, one A. Girls basketball. The nominees are Taryn Bateman, Bonners Ferry, Madeline Green, Grangeville, Brittany Phillips, Wallace, Lily Ruder, Clark Fork, Samara Powaki, Lapway. Kennedy Kirk Deary and Haley Taylor Kendrick. Our winner tonight is Madeline Green of Grangeville. The junior was a force for the Bulldogs and was named second team All State selection. This season, she averaged over 17 points, almost nine rebounds, and two and a half steals per game as the Bulldogs finished fourth in the state 2A classification. Our winner, Madeline Green from Grangeville. Boys basketball, 5A, 4A. The nominees are Logan Orchard, Coeur d'Alene. Reese Strawn, Lake City. Jordan Bramlett, Lewiston. Kai Wheeler, Coeur d'Alene. Parker Childs, Sandpoint. And Ian Hillman, Moscow. Our winner is Logan Orchard of Coeur d'Alene High School. Logan is headed to Eastern Oregon to commit uh, to continue his college basketball career. He helped the Vikings to their first state championship since 2012. He also led all of the 5A classification and assists at 5.8 per game, averaged 11 and a half points a game, six rebounds, and a block per contest. Logan also was the team shutdown defender uh, as Coeur d'Alene. Yes, congratulations. Sorry, congratulations. Logan Orchard, Coeur d'Alene. 3A, 2A, 1A. The nominees in boys basketball, Thomas Bateman, Bonners Ferry. Asher Williams, Bonners Ferry. Wyatt Holmes, St. Mary's. Tyson Charlie, Lakeside. Chase San Roman, Clark Fork. Case Why Not, Lapway. David Clunt, or Clute, I should say, Camei. Jackson Vowles, Potlatch. And Nathan Twite from Kendrick. We have two winners of the classification, Asher Williams of Bonners Ferry and Case Why Not of Lapway. Asher's a six foot five junior guard, averaged 28 and a half points a game, six rebounds, two assists, shooting 58% from the floor. He was the 3A Intermountain League's most valuable player. Case was the 1A White Pine League's Player of the Year. The 6'6 senior is Idaho's all-time leading scorer with 2,962 points. He averaged 36 points a game, which was fifth in the nation. He also averaged 14 rebounds and nine assists. Both uh, winners, Asher and Case, were selected 
as the player of the year in the state of Idaho in their respective classifications for the second straight year, and both led their teams to state championships. Congratulations to Asher and Case. And who wants to see a one-on-one -on -one battle break out here right now, huh? All right. Boys Wrestling, 5A, 4A. The nominees are Seth Martin from Post Falls, Carson Leonard from Lakeland, Tyson Barnhart from Post Falls, Hoyt Hess from Lewiston, and Ryder Sagney from Post Falls. Sagain? Sagain? Sagain. And Ryder Sagain from Post Falls. All right, before I tell you the winner, I just want to say all five of our nominees are not only state champions, but they combined the five of them to have a record of 228 wins and 24 losses this season. Very impressive. We do have two winners here. Ryder Sagain of Post Falls and Hoyt Hess of Lewiston. Ryder was injured for part of the year, but still finished at 28 and four. He won the 120 pound 5A weight class. Hoyt had the most wins of anybody in our nominees. He had 56 wins this year against four losses and won the 132 pound weight class, also at the 5A level. Hoyt will wrestle next year at North Idaho College. Both winners tonight are three-time state champions. Congratulations to Ryder and Hoyt. Boys Wrestling, 3A, 2A. The nominees are Caden Schaff from Nez Pierce. Uh, Colm McLamtag from Priest River and Bass Myers from Clearwater Valley. Like our 5A, 4A nominees, all three of our nominees in this category won state championships and they combined for 105 wins against just 16 losses. Tonight's winner is Bass Myers of Clearwater Valley. Bass won the state title at 195 pounds and posted a 35-2 and record. All right. Congratulations, Bass Myers from Clearwater Valley. Girls Wrestling. The nominees are Jolie Slider from Lewiston, Kara Brown from Coeur d'Alene, Haley McNeil from Potlatch, Aubrey Wells from Bonners Ferry, and Eva Willis from Bonners Ferry. And just so you know, Idaho has just one classification for girls wrestling, so that's why all of these athletes are in this classification. These all five combined to finish second at state, had a combined record of 141 wins and 29 losses. And our winner tonight is Jolie Slider of Lewiston. Jolie had a sensational junior season. She was 45 and two and finished second at 114 pounds. She also won titles this year at the prestigious Rolly Lane, North Idaho Rumble and Jaybird Memorial Tournaments. Congratulations to our winner, Jolie Slider of Lewiston. 
All right, those are our individual awards. Now we're going to give out our team awards. And reminder, if you are part of that team, all of you stand up, all right, when we call your team name. The boys' team of the year, 5A-4A. The nominees are Coeur d'Alene football, Sandpoint soccer, Coeur d'Alene cross country, Lake City swimming, Lakeland swimming. And our winner tonight of the boys' team of the year in the 5A, 4A is Coeur d'Alene cross country. This was as dominant a team as we have seen in cross country in North Idaho in a long time. Uh, they dominated both the region and the state tournaments. The team was ranked 10th nationally. Coeur d'Alene had five runners placed in the top 16 at state, including four in the top 11. Vikings won the state title by 15 points. Coeur d'Alene had the five best times at state among all North Idaho runners. And at the district meet, it had the top seven times among those runners from District 1 and 2. This was the school's first state title in boys cross country since 2011. Our boys team of the year is Coeur d'Alene cross country. Gentlemen, congratulations. Boys team of the year, 3A, 2A, 1A. The nominees are Kendrick football. Troy basket or baseball, excuse me. Troy baseball. Bonners Ferry basketball. And Lapway basketball. We have two winners tonight. Kendrick football and Bonners Ferry basketball. Let's, let's do Kendrick football first. We'll do the Kendrick football guys first. Let's tell you about them. Third straight 1A Division II eight-man title. The team went 10-0, and won its three games. Get this, the three games in the state tournament. They won their three games by scores of 90 to nothing, 88 to 20, and then another shutout, 68 to nothing in the championship game. The Tigers beat three of the four state semifinalists in the next division up in the 1A Division I. Kendrick Football. Bonners Ferry basketball title was the first in school history. The Badgers were seated second, beat number seven, Kimberly, by 11, then number six, Marsh Valley, by 15. In the title game against top-seeded Teton, Bonners Ferry led by one, entering the final quarter, and then pulled away to win it. They went 23-3, and undefeated against all 3A schools, and again, their first-ever state basketball championship. Congratulations to Kendrick Football and Bonners Ferry Basketball. Girls Team of the Year, 5A, 4A. The nominees are Lake City Swimming, Coeur d'Alene Basketball, Sandpoint Soccer, and Sandpoint Swimming. We have two winners. Coeur d'Alene basketball and Sandpoint soccer. We'll tell you about Coeur d'Alene basketball first. The Vikings won their second straight state title and their 11th overall. The team came to life at the right time. After being the two seed in the district tournament, the Vikings captured not only the district title, but the state title, finishing off their season at 20 and 5.
All right, how about Sandpoint Soccer? They were the four seed at the state tournament, but used defense and outstanding pace to take home the championship. Sandpoint beat Skyline 2-0, top seed Pocatello 2-1, and then number two seed Bishop Kelly 2-1 for the title. Sandpoint finished at 11-5-3 and, and won the girls' ninth state soccer championship. Congratulations to Sandpoint Soccer and Coeur d'Alene Basketball, the girls' 5A, 4A teams of the year. 3A, 2A, 1A, girls' team of the year. The nominees are Genesee Softball, Bonners Ferry Golf, Troy Volleyball, and Kendrick Basketball. Our winner, Troy Volleyball. The Trojans won the 1A title again. It's the fifth time in six years, including three in a row. They beat Grace after they had to rally to do that to win the state title. The Trojans finished their season at 24-1, and and every match they had in the White Pine League, they won 3-0. Congratulations, Troy Volleyball. Boys, Coach of the Year, 5A, 4A. The nominees are Sean Amos, Coeur d'Alene High School Football. Kathy Compton, Coeur d'Alene Cross Country. Shelly Sobeck, Lake City Swimming. Rob Urbaniak, Lakeland Swimming and Tanner French, Sandpoint Soccer. Our winner tonight, Boys Coach of the Year, is Kathy Compton from Coeur d'Alene Cross Country. Compton led the Vikings to their first state title since 2011 and also to that ranking of 10th nationally and, again, dominating Wherever they went, five runners that stayed in the top 16, four in the top 11. Congratulations to Kathy Compton, our Boys Coach of the Year. Boys Coach of the Year, 3A, 2A, 1A. The nominees are Tyler Strunk, Troy Baseball. Zach Eastman, Lapway Basketball. Zane Hobart, Kendrick Football. And Nathan Williams, Bonners Ferry Basketball. Our winners tonight, co-winners, two of them, Zach Eastman from Lapway and Zane Hobart from Kendrick. We'll tell you about Hobart. He helped Kendrick dominate the opposition as well, winning its third straight 1A Division II eight-man title. In the three playoff games, they outscored their opponents 246 to 20. That's in the playoffs. Kendrick averaged 70 points a game, posting four shutouts during the season. Thank you, Zane. And Zach Eastman led Lapway to a 25-2 and record. Avenged last season's state championship by beating Lakeside in the title game. Lapway was the 13th straight title. That ties Bora for the all-time record in any classification. Case, why not from Lapway accepting the award for Coach Eastman? Girls Coach of the Year, 5A, 4A. The nominees are Shelly Sobeck, Lake City Swimming. Greg Jackson, Sandpoint Swimming. Nicole Simmons, Coeur d'Alene Basketball. And Connor, uh, Connor Barnansky, Sandpoint Soccer. 
Co-winners again, we have two. Connor Baranski from Sandpoint and Nicole Simmons from Coeur d'Alene. We'll give you Nicole first. She led the Vikings to their second straight state title, their 11th overall. Not only did they win the district title, they won the state title as well in both games, beating their rivals, Lake City. Vikings finished off the season at 20 and 5. Connor is not with us tonight. He's not in Hawaii, he's in Mexico. Connor. Connor's team led the Bulldogs to the state title going in as the number four seed. They used defense and outstanding goaltending to take home the championship. It's the ninth title in Sandpoint history for soccer. Congratulations to Cole. Congratulations, Connor, co-coaches of the year, girls 5A, 4A. Girls coach of the year, 3A, 2A, 1A. The nominees are Brian Malcolm, Genesee Softball. Deborah Blazard, Troy Volleyball. Don, uh, Ron Ireland, Kendrick Basketball. And Ralph Loshbich, Bonners Ferry Golf. Our winner tonight is Ron Ireland, Kendrick Basketball. Kendrick won the state title. Not only do that, they also are undefeated against teams in their own classification. It's the fourth state title for Kendrick, but it's the first one in 22 years. The Tigers went 23-3. and Also, Ron announced that was his final game at Kendrick. He's retiring after 11 seasons. Congratulations to Ron Ireland, Kendrick Basketball. Time for our Male Athlete of the Year, 5A-4A. The nominees are Kai Wheeler, Coeur d'Alene, Jesse Turner, Sandpoint, Lachlan May, Coeur d'Alene, Luke Leavitt, Sandpoint, Tyson Izzo, Moscow, Alex Shields, Post Falls. Drew Lehman, Sandpoint. And Connor Isaacson, Moscow. We have two winners tonight. They are Kai Wheeler of Coeur d'Alene and Jesse Turner of Sandpoint. Kai earned all league honors in football and basketball. In football, he caught 37 passes for 479 yards and five touchdowns. His biggest game was in the state championship when he caught five balls for 139 yards and a score. In basketball, he was a first-team all-league selection. The junior forward made his presence felt inside, helped the Vikings to the state tournament where he averaged nearly nine rebounds a game. Our other winner... is Jesse Turner of Sandpoint. He's also a junior. He played infield and pitch for the Bulldogs, 4-2 and two as a pitcher, struck out 20 batters in 26 innings. In football, he was a first-team all-league selection at tight end. In 10 games, he caught 25 balls, 257, and two touchdowns, and also threw one pass for 36 yards. Our male athletes of the year, congratulations, Kai Wheeler of Coeur d'Alene and Jesse Turner of Sandpoint. 3A, 2A, 1A. Here are the nominees for Male Athlete of the Year. Cooper Lentz from Timberlake. Nathan Twett from Kendrick. Jackson Vowles from Potlatch. Ty Keep from Kendrick. Trey Bateman of Bonners Ferry. Bass Myers from Clearwater Valley. David Clute from Kamei. Jacob Yetter from Timberlake. Jack Driscolls from Logos. And Gavin Christopherson from Timberlake.
We have two winners in this classification as well. Ty Keep of Kendrick and Trey Bateman of Bonners Ferry. Ty earned all league honors in baseball, football, and basketball, including the MVP award in football. In baseball, he had 473 for the Tigers, 26 runs scored, seven doubles, four triples, 13 steals, 3 0 on the mound with a 2.30 ERA, striking out 66 batters in 42.5 innings, and he was second team All State. In football, you heard early how he completed 66% of his passes, um, 40 touchdowns, 11 rushing yards the 1A State Player of the Year. And in basketball, he averaged 10.5 points, 6 rebounds, 2.5 assists, and a steal and a half per game. Trey Bateman of the Badger baseball team hit 350 last spring and led the team with 23 RBI, 6-1 and one on the mound, striking out 30 batters in 35 innings. He was the MVP of the Intermountain League in baseball. In football, he played running back, tight end, and nose guard, led the team with 22 receptions for 310 yards and four touchdowns. He also made 40 tackles, including five for loss. In basketball, he was a first-team all-league, second-team all-state selection. The senior averaged nine and a half points, seven rebounds, four assists for the state champion. Our two winners, Ty Keep of Kendrick and Trey Bateman of Bonners Ferry, both three-sport athletes. They got so much stuff, I can't get it out before they go sit back down. I feel bad. Female Athlete of the Year, 5A, 4A, the nominees, Allison Olson of Lewiston, Punk Knot of Moscow, Landry Simon of Lakeland, Lila Kiefer of Lakeland, and Maddie Mitchell of Coeur d'Alene. Our winner is Landry Simon of Lakeland High School. Landry was the MVP of the Inland Empire League in basketball, first team all-league selection in volleyball. The junior played guard for the Hawks basketball team, averaging almost 19 points a game, six rebounds, three and a half steals, and was named second team all-state. She also helped Lakeland to a fourth-place finish at the state volleyball tournament. Helping, uh, playing a huge role as an outside hitter. Again, fourth place in basketball, fourth place in volleyball. Congratulations to Landry Simon of Lakeland. Three A, two A, one A, female athlete of the year. Brittany Phillips from Wallace. Kennedy Kirk from Deary. Haley Taylor from Kendrick. Maddie Thacker from Grangeville. Annabelle Carr from Quarter Lane Charter. Area Wood from Deary, and Asia Abukari from Bonners Ferry. Why? Why can't I say that name? Asha. Again, the apology still goes. All right. Okay. There you go. All right. Our winners tonight are Haley Taylor of Kendrick and Maddie Thacker of Grangeville. Haley showed off her athleticism by naming, being named first-team All-League in three sports and first-team All-State selection in both softball and basketball, as well as a second-team All-State selection in volleyball. In softball, she helped Kendrick play second at state. In volleyball, she was the co-MVP of the White Pine League, where Kendrick finished fifth at state. And in basketball, she was the league MVP, the 1A State Player of the Year, averaging 11.5 points, four assists, three steals a game. Maddie was a first-team All-Central Idaho League selection in softball and basketball. She earned second-team All-State honors in softball, where she pitched, caught, and played third base 
and was also the captain of the team. In basketball, she was a first-team all-league selection and helped the Bulldogs to the state tournament where they placed fourth. The 3A, 2A, 1A players of female athletes of the year are Haley Taylor of Kendrick and Maddie Thacker of Grangeville. Sorry about that. I thought I could make it. All right. Just a reminder, don't forget to stick around a few more minutes for the scholarship drawings. But now we want to present something that's very special to all of us here that are associated with the North Idaho Hall of Fame Awards. It is the Dwayne Hagedon High Character Award winners. It is the fourth time we have done this, and it is a thrill for all of us to do this. Um, this is awarded to a nominated female and male athlete from each school is named after Dwayne Hagedon, who founded the North Hall of Fame 62 years ago. In defining the award, it recognizes a student athlete who excels in the classroom and as a teammate, has outstanding work ethic and integrity, displays sportsmanship and true character in all walks of life, and is just an all-around good individual. Civic and community involvement is a bonus as well. So for the Hagedon High Character Award, I'm going to read the school first, then the athletes. When your name is called, please stand. And remain standing, please. All right. Uh, Bonners Ferry, Chandler Swanson, and Lindsay Onstock. Coeur d'Alene Charter, Owen Sharp. Natal Davis. Coeur d'Alene High School. Nolan Christ. Olivia Nakarado. Clark Fork. Arrow Christofferson. Aurora Lane. Deary. Lathan Proctor. Area Wood. Genesee, Cole Scharnhorst, Maya Scharnhorst. Genesis Prep, C.J. Elliott, Katie Yount. Noah Watts, or excuse me, Highland, Noah Watson, and Kendall Thomason. Kamii, Porter Whipple, and Risa Lowen. Kellogg, Blake Corbin, and Macy Jerome. Kendrick, Dallas Morgan, and Taylor Boyer. Lakeland, Carson Leonard, and Landry Simon. Lakeside, Brutus Sijon, and Martina Rivera. Lake City, Macy Lilliquist and Benjamin Linford. Lewiston, Drew Hottinger and Allison Olson. Moscow, Mick Perryman and Geneva McClure. McClory. Nez Pierce, Nick Kirkland, Erica Zenner. Orofino, Dashell Barlow, Hannah Johnson. Post Falls, Logan Clark, Kinley McLean. Potlatch, Casey Clark, Giovanni Uquaro. Sandpoint, Devin McDaniel and Jet Loniker. St. Mary's, Brock Anderson, Cami Rimmel. Timberlake, Jacob Yetter. Timberline, Ryland West. Troy, Eli Stoner, Alora Holly. And Wallace, Julian Davis, and Brittany Phillips.
Let's give all of these young individuals a great round of applause, huh? Those are your award winners for the fourth annual Dwayne Hagedon High Character Award. Thank you so much. One more round of applause for all of our winners and all of our nominees here tonight. I'm going to turn this back over to Rick. And Mark Schlereth is there going to draw for the scholarship drawings. But I will tell you something special about this Idaho Vandals helmet. It was signed by five individuals. If you have been to the Idaho Vandal Kibbe Dome and seen the retired numbers on the wall, there are five of them. There are five signatures on well, there's Yeah, there are five signatures, all five of those retired jerseys right here. And we're going to use this to draw. I'm not sure I would do that, but you're, you're the boss. <laughs> Thank you again, everybody. I appreciate you coming. Hope you had a great time. Nobody's better. Big round of applause. Dennis Patchen. Great job. Big round of applause. The last time I, I grabbed a Vandal helmet, some of you know I played in Montana. I got called for holding, so this was good. I, I'll hand it over here to John here. So um, what we're going to do is he's dropping him in there. Just, there were some other people tonight that helped out. So we had Brooke doing all our photography, Jane and Ann over there running the video. We had our certificate folk. Where are they at? Way back there. Um, if you did not get your certificate and ADs, please go back and go pick them up. They're at, back in the back room. We'd like to save on mailing. So if you can go ADs, go back and get your certificates. We had a whole group of folks helping check in. So we want to thank all them. I want to thank our sponsors again, Chris and the P1FCU team and our, and our board. You know, I really, you know, we couldn't do it without that board. Um, so what we're going to do first. That award, last one, that last award, it was very special. It's Mr. Hagenon started this thing 62 years ago with the Coeur Press and Bob Maker. And before he passed away, he brought me over and he called me up. And and uh, he was always very serious when he spoke, you know, we were talking. And he said, you, you, you and your committee have done a great job with this. But the kids that he wants to fight for were those high character kids that you guys were, were recognized there. And if there's an award, there was a lot of great winners and a lot of great stuff, but that really represents the best of the best. And those that were nominated, you should be very proud of that. That is it. Dwayne was the highest level of person and something we all look for. We would not be here today without his building and his four, you know, so um, it was a pretty neat deal. And his, and his wife, Lola, phenomenal lady, she's putting up the scholarship. So are we doing the, the Ladies first, so Mark's going to pull them out, and then we're going to, you had to be present to win, so hopefully you're around here, so. Is Macy Jerome from Kellogg in the house? Macy Jerome. Is she here? Yep, she's on her way. On her way, very good. So, Jane, keep the name, crack of the names, and. Now we're going to do the Hagen on High Character Mail, and we'll have go ahead and stay up here for a picture with Mark and John, and then we'll we'll get that. And... Is Mick Perryman from Moscow in the house? Mick Perryman from Moscow in the house. Great, so he's waking his way up here. We'll take him out. We'll get a picture here with the two scholarship winners. And it's from the Lola Hagenon Foundation. So very special night. Now, everybody, so all the nominee athletes are in this scholarship. This is from Tim and Sandy Ross back there, our good friends. So they put up the, the uh, scholarship money. A big round of applause for Tim and Sandy. He might jump. We're getting close. 921. I told you 930. We're keeping to it. Yeah. I just saw her win the award. Our female scholarship winner from Post Falls, Kylie Monday.
she head out a little early? Oh, we're drawing again. There we go. Oh, yeah. We said it from the beginning. We must be present to win. And I'm really going to talk from Lewiston, Addie McCarcher. There's Addie in the house. Lewiston group? Nope. Bert? Nope. Oh, there we go. We got our win. All right. There she goes. She's going to come and get. Got to yell. Oh, yeah. Last one. And we'll... thanks again to all the nominees and winners. You should be very proud of yourself and your family. Thank your mom and dad when you go out here. I lost my dad, who's a member of this, you know, a few years ago, and I miss him every day. So give a chance to thank your mom and dad. Give them a chance to give them a hug, you know, because you don't do what you do without them. So make sure the messages from our inductees, you know, it was very special. And so, it's, you know, you guys remember that. You guys go out and you thank your mom and dad, thank your coaches. That's why I blocked for him. That's why you did too. I blocked for him in high school. You did in college, yep. So we had to make his head, you know, just. <laughs> From Post Falls, our wrestling runner, Ryder Seguin. Ryder's still here. There we go. Ryder will come up. We'll get a picture of our two winners. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thanks a lot. Big round of applause for the board and everybody again. One more time. Thank you, everybody. Drive home safely. Congratulations.